Welcome everyone to uh, Finding Voices podcast number two. I'm Eugene Wasoski Gallagher. Alex here. Tom Wheeler. And today we're going to be talking about avoidance and how it affects our speech, how our speech affects how we live. Oh, wait, in fact, the other way around. First, what is avoidance? Then, how it affects our speech and how it affects our lives. That's right. Damn straight. We'll, we'll do. And um, well, we did the internet search on avoidance and uh, medical definition of avoidance: the act or practice of keeping away from or withdrawing from something undesirable. And um, Google defines avoidance as the action of keeping away from not doing something. I, I totally agree with both. <laughs> what sort of avoidances do we usually do? do what's the most... What's the one which you think you avoid most in your life? Yeah. What is she? I think the thing I'm probably most guilty of is not talking to uh, members of staff who are serving like people in coffee shops or whatever yeah. because partly because it's an easy one to avoid yeah everyone avoids it because we don't like talking yeah it, like people are scared to interact mm. but do you mean situations where a waiter or waitress is passing you no as in like you're I making mean, so. an order oh, really? and you just have a chat oh so, oh, I see, yeah. Because being, I reckon I'm generally quite outgoing yeah. and I always have an urge to just have a chat. Yeah, yeah. How they're doing, what's, what's keeping them busy, or whatever. Like one. Yeah, just like, <laughs> just generally being, having a human interaction yeah, with yeah. someone who is doing their best. It's their job to serve you, but. Make it easy for them. Yeah, just. Be human, interact nicely. Mm. I avoid that one. From like, in my head, I know it's because I fear saying certain words, and I know I'm gonna screw up and hold them up. Mm. If that makes sense, which means it stops being a human interaction, and starts being asking more of them. Yeah, I get you. I get you, Alex. What situations or things do you avoid? Yeah, well I stutter. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all do, don't we all. For those who, who don't know. All right. You poor thing. <laughs> all right, so, um, when I forget that I stutter, mm. I still avoid things which um, I think are not related to stuttering. Like I avoid people I don't like. I <laughs> I, I avoid being in groups of uh, this and that um, political or some other for the reasons that not related to stuttering. Ah yes. But <laughs> all other avoidances, which probably ninety percent mm. of all my life, maybe. 95 like all my life I've been ruled by my own avoidance avoiding talking to this mm. avoiding talking to that but I also consider myself as like quiet and generally I avoid everything person mm. but um, the worst the worst avoidance is is, is when I want to talk to yeah, mm. that's really I suppose mm. the issue question. It's like yeah. seriously, I I I, um, I want to talk to a person or to a group of people, or I want to say something. Mm. Yeah. And I'm going to avoid it because I stutter. It is true. I think um, personally, the situations which I avoid because of my stammer or my speech are largely things which involve a lot of arguing. And there are lots of moments which you'll be interrupted 
mm. because it's like a very free flowing <coughs> conversation. The point, really, the most, um, the, the kind of most, the kind of best example of this would be a political debate with someone mm. where they've got the whole host of facts behind them, but so do you, except because you have this vocal block, this um, speech defect you can't mm. interact on the same <coughs> length and mm. so they kind of automatically win the argument mm. by dint of you not being able to voice your argument yeah so it's like that's something where you need to be a fluent speaker it's like it's almost as if you need to have a certain speech way of speech to survive in that mm. and you can't just get by on people um, being nice to you and stuff, being like, oh, take yeah. your time and stuff, because yeah. that's just not how the environment works. So I personally avoid things like political debates, although I am, I think, quite interested in politics, and I do like to watch political videos. Not much of a debater, for reasons I've just listed, mm. but I do have an interest in po politics. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Just confessed our deepest, darkest, <laughs> darkest fears. You know? So if you want to like ruin us, just approach yeah. us one day yeah. and start talking shit about us and talking a bit about like our politics, then we'll just yeah. have nervous breakdowns and Basically, you win. Yeah. Basically, we, you're avoiding situations where you might be rudely interrupted. Mm. That would get you're vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, that would get into. Yeah. Right, um, but uh, anyone get, can get rudely interrupted. Yeah, but in our case here, yeah, we we probably would get uh, caught. We're more likely, I think, because of not just the fact that we stammer, but but also of the way that we monitor our stammers and make attempts to reduce it, like by sp speaking slower and having longer pauses. Mm. People are more likely to interrupt those pauses and be like yeah. I'm using that moment when you stop speaking yeah. to argue and you have to kind of basically explain I'm pausing not so that you can interrupt me yeah. although in like a normal uh, conversation or argument you could do that it's like special circumstances mm. uh, had to apply you have to own the field in a way like you have to set the rules so that's what we Avoid because of our speech. Mm. Is that right? So, are there any other like areas in your life which you just would um want? Hmm. I'm badly sent destruction. Uh, <laughs> what <laughs> I think yeah. this like, is this <laughs> is. I'm trying to stop avoiding and yeah. <laughs> trying to be persuasive. Uh, where you would avoid. Uh, wait, you haven't, you, the situations you would avoid speaking, but would there be other scenarios where speech isn't involved, which you would still avoid doing for whatever other reason, and you think it would be more likely? You avoid doing that because of your your mentality, not yeah. not your stammer, your mentality yeah. which of avoidance. you associated with your stammer, but which could be caused by mm. the stammer could be caused I by this. That, I thought that for or this could be caused by a stammer. I thought that for a long while, where I thought, okay, um, I'm avoiding this solely <clears throat> on, solely on the basis of my stammer. Mm. I can't do this because of my stammer. Mm. Then I went through. A patch which I think has to a degree continued in my life where my speech is relatively fluent mm. and I feel more, more in control of it and I feel like the summer wouldn't hinder me however I still haven't mm. I still haven't applied myself to that situation and I think in a way there are there are lots of things which we blame on our stammer because it's easy yeah it's yeah. easy to, to say oh you know I, I you know I didn't do this because of my stammer yeah, I think this because of my stammer. It's the same excuse which any victim <laughs> yeah, yeah. uses. Like I couldn't do this because of my bad leg mm -hmm. and everything like that. And it's like, yes, that could plausibly be an excuse, but if you really wanted it, mm. you could kind of do it because you can have the strength 
thinks too. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of a victim mentality, which I don't think is just ours. I think it is part of a wider culture, um, which I think we have to try and break out of. And stammering merely solidifies our reputation mm. as victims and therefore gives us like a let off when it comes mm -hmm. to hard and difficult challenges. Shouldn't be the case, we should continue to apply ourselves like any other person. And don't use the oh yeah but no but yeah. stuff. So that's more, I don't think that is, we are just using the stammer as an excuse. Do you reckon we're not the only ones who use excuses like badly made excuses which then hold them back later on of course you want to no no um for instance i know people from my secondary school who said things like oh i couldn't do that because i was too poor and it's like mm. why are you too poor it's because i spent all my money on the drink <laughs> In festivals and stuff. And it's like, <laughs> like, that's not poor. <laughs> that's yeah, just selective. That's just that's just, that's just, that's just, that's just your error. Yeah. You know, you Pardon my language. But um, no, no, no. We are not the only ones. Mm. On Funny stretch of the imagination. I think it's just it's just like <coughs> moments when it's very small moments. I think when it matters most. Stuff like you say when you when you have to order something from mm. a cafe, mm. like that's when I think the stammer becomes unique. Because someone with yeah. like a bad leg, but yeah. you know, they, they can do it. Yeah, because they can just hobble over. Yeah, a bit a bit of pain, <laughs> but they can still hobble and talk. Yeah, so something like know. a wheelchair. Can do that. <laughs> yeah. We just hobble while we're making the order. Just hobble. Yeah, <laughs> so we walk over there smoothly and yeah. then we start hobbling. It's the inverse. It's the inverse. It's the inverse. It's like, we, we can sprint there if we wanted to. Mm, mm. At pace. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Weirdly, if you do that, you actually will probably find it easier. Yeah. Because your breathing changes. Yeah. Now, I've been, um, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of... Uh, thinking recently as, as to my speech as I do I think as I think we all do mm. by every day really we think why is it not worth this moment what's mm. the situation and it's not about black and white obviously mm. however I think I found a kind of pattern to something which makes me have relatively good speech mm. I've really found that on days off and I'm completely free yeah I've done nothing all day my speech is really worse. <laughs> I can relate to that Same one. I can relate. I'm yeah. like, this is terrible. <laughs> I don't understand why. It's like, I'm on holiday. Yeah. I'm meant to be like the chillest man. Yeah, yeah. I'm meant to be like, I'm chill. You know, nothing's yeah. in my way. You can't say a word. <laughs> you can't say a word. And it's like, basically, I came about this from reading a book. It's called Sex at D Dusk. Yeah. And it's all about, it's basically like a counter argument to the book Sex at D Dawn which is, which is um, saying that like mankind is being um, impinged not impinged but it's being ruined by marriage like the institution mm. of marriage is degrading like it's terrible mm. we should all just live like bonobo chimps and and, hump and just like hump everybody <laughs> and, and everything the yeah. whole time <laughs> all the time and if you look into the like like how b bonobo chimps operate mm. They have like paedophilia is rife, yeah. incest, <laughs> mothers and sons have it on every day. Yeah. You know, it's not like a thing to celebrate, I don't think. You have this weird perception. Anyway, and basically, long story short, the yep. book says that after a tense, that sex is, that sex follows in the bonobo world and, over, and, and also in the chimpanzee world after a very t tense encounter. Mm. And that made me thought, it's a kind of relief. Mm. And it made me thought, after work, my speech is really good. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm relieved. <laughs> and I feel it's like, ah. Yeah, survive. So I find, yeah. in a way, really, really enough, that if I work mm. for like six hours really mm. intensely, and I'm sweating and you know, pumping it out, after it's finished, my speech is, is, is excellent for the entire evening. Mm. And it's like, why is that? And I feel like it's almost as if you have to earn speech. It, it is mm. bizarre. It's mm. bizarre. This might just be, you know, like a pot theory. It's there for the next three days and it's been destructed. Mm. So one question to keep it on the avoidance topic. Okay. Sorry. No, no, no. But it, yeah. it, it's relevant to what you said because your stuff yeah. is relevant to this talk. Yeah. Um, 
So, if you had to do something vitally important, mm. okay, compare after work, you where you work for six hours, yeah, but you're you're not too tired in the evening, yeah, versus in the evening on a day you're not working, mm. so you have the same amount of time, yeah. same l level of tiredness, yeah. And I say it's a vitally important thing. Yeah. Which one would you be more nervous attending? The one when you're on your day off. Yeah, <laughs> which is the most messed up bit. Yes, <laughs> because I think if you've been at work, you have the mindset of if you need something to do, yeah, just do it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think like, oh, now I'm going to just chill some more. Have really shit speech mm. for a bit longer. <laughs> you know. I found yeah. that. The more I work, it's like it's like that um, sign yeah. over the Auschwitz <clears throat> camp that says work oh, sets you free. Mm -hmm. Kind of does. For us. <laughs> well, <laughs> for stammerers, anyway. For us, for stammerers, <laughs> stammerers, work has set me free. Because of the... Not mm. the people inside the camp. No. Because that's wrong. Yeah, I think it's a good thing you <laughs> dug yourself out of that hole. Because <laughs> I was very close on the edge. It's like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Phew, good. Right. Okay, um, so... Isn't it like clear as day? I was the most fluent always. Mm. When I was the most distracted. Most di distracted. distracted. In, in what way do you mean distracted? In a... Um, for example, you're in uh, some uh, um, situation mm. where mm. everything else is more important than your speech. Like work, mm. uh, and for example, your, like, your house is on fire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not going There's... to start it. <laughs> <laughs> I, Crazy fire start. <laughs> I, I won't have time for this. And I will like give orders to people. Yeah. I won't block. I know it, and I know that you guys won't block. No yeah. one will. Because, I mean, I've been in those kind of situations, and I saw myself. Oh, I, I didn't even notice. I was completely fluent. Mm. For example, once, um, like we, we were racing, and um, uh, my uh, friend was driving, and and I was on a co-pilot seat. And we were turning left, and I saw a car over there. I know that he don't see it, mm. and the car was backing up. So I told him like, uh, gas and ride, you know, like faster. So like, don't s slow down. Yeah. Just stand and then ride. So yeah, and I know that I said it clear as fuck. Yeah. And uh, and then later on I thought well. What if I would start? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You mm. can't afford. Mm. Mm. No, no. It, it never even crosses your your mind in those moments of, of the most destruction. Mm. And that can be work. That can be this and this. But I was never considered myself being distracted mm. when I'm on a sport. Mm. Like mm. when I'm on a class, I have to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Everything else actually disappears, and it only does. and and only your speech related shit stays with you, and mm. it's all it's it's all you think. Mm. But when at the same <coughs> time, like meteoroid would struck the earth yeah. mm. behind the window, everyone would panic, and we would say our speech perfectly at that moment. <laughs> yes. Right? We want the apocalypse yeah. to happen. Yeah, like we... Please. Yeah. Like, because the most part of our brain will be distracted mm. or physical labor. Mm. Same mm. thing. You you think that you are not thinking, but you're actually controlling every single movement of, of yeah. your body. Mm. You're completely distracted with that. You won't mm. start if you start talking at the second. I think... Well, well... So, okay, yeah. wait. So, if to combine what you two are saying, I think the underlying principle is determination. So, if you have to do work, you are determined to do something. Mm. 
if you're distracted, you are determined to do something, mm. which is obviously inform someone of the issue that's up ahead, or not, as the case may be. But is would you say then is the determination thing which would most affect your speech? So the determination to overcome your unwillingness to do something. Yeah. And that if you have that determination, it's much easier to tackle your speech because your brain itself isn't holding it back. Like I'm not so sure because there, be, there, there, there have been moments when I'm determined mm. not to stammer or I'm determined to get something. Yeah. And it is, has involved having to speak to someone and I've stammered badly. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do that all the time, yeah. <laughs> especially so, when it's vitally important. Yeah. I'm like, can't yeah. say a word. I need so to I say. Think, <laughs> but I think it's. But I think in a way, it is more to do with if you know what you want to do, rather if you know exactly what you need to do. Mm. As in, it's a hard one to explain. Um, kind of to rewind slash move it a bit different situation. Um, well. That, I'm not sure if you've seen Shakespeare in Love. Shakespeare in Love? No, no, no. I will. Anyway, there is uh, a very I'll, small I'll scene. Watch this. Don't waste your time. <laughs> I you avoided waste it time. at the last minute. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't waste your time, but there's one character in it who stammers and yeah. is asked to go on stage yeah. and it's like, oh my god, no, I stammer. Yeah. Then the moment he gets on stage, he comes he out with the most it. amazing voice. Yeah. Obviously, and I think it's kind of like that, where suddenly you're like you're confronted, and in your panic, you're fluent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just mad. Yeah. You've got no idea mm. why you're doing it. I've had that um, numerous occasions. Where, has there's like um, some scenarios which you cannot avoid, mm. or you kick yourself so badly if you did, you're like, if right. you're trapped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's uh, it. If you're trapped. So, common ones for me. Uh, if you have to speak in front of anyone in authority and you don't really have a choice because you're the only one there who can say the words, you're yeah. like, well, I've got to say it. Yeah. Um, on the phone, trying to tell people who you are. Yes. And the other one is anything with ladies. Because <laughs> that one, quite a big one because you can't, because that's the one you'll definitely kick yourself if you don't say it. You're like, well, I don't know. It depends. I have to say it. <laughs> well, I think that is more... Terrifying. To do with how confident you are with the ladies. Start. No, no, is is more in terms of like, if you have to tell them one thing in particular. Oh and yeah. Nervous yes. and crap yes. about yes. it. Yes. And you're yes. like yes. that is true. You, if you say it, you know you're going to say it badly because you're going to stammer through the entire mm. thing. Yeah, yeah. Even before you even begin, you're like, this is going to be so awkward. Um, and then. It, but you have to say it because otherwise you will kick yourself for the next year and a half. Mm. <laughs> so you're like, well, <laughs> just do with it. Basically, if something is imminent, right? Mm. Something we can't avoid. We're already in a situation. All those fears, they're just not there anymore. Well, because they, yeah, because you're there. Because you're already there. It's, mm. It's too late. Is that uh, preparation mm. to this freaking uh, moment? Mm. Or oh, is that a um, psychological road I would recommend to no one? <laughs> 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 to, uh, building up to this moment when you want to perform right, but maybe your subconscious uh, to don't want you really to go there mm. because knows it's start and then you would feel better but I don't know it's a double bluff mm. our brain plays with us mm. so if we avoid something if we get in ready for something most likely we'll fuck it up yeah right or if we have an opportunity to get prepared for something I think that's the the time when the avoidance can kick in because mm. Once you're there, you're like, well, I'm here. I have to do something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Filled up. Mm. About to say um, And in a way, isn't it facing your fears? Yeah, it's facing fear. Mm. And um, 
I like this thing. The difference between courage and bravery. Mm. Courage is when we, in the face of fear, we do the right thing. Yeah. And bravery is when, in the face of fear, we do crazy dumb shit. Right? I, I which, always thought yeah. that too. Which also can be a right thing at the end, but, but we can, like, really... I, I always thought the difference was that, I think, with courage you do the thing in spite of your fear. With bravery, you do the thing because you have no choice. And okay. it's like... Oh, you have a choice when you're no, brave. No, as in... Courage too. If you're courageous, you will leave your shelter to go take on an enemy. I thought that was If you're yeah. brave... Yeah, me too. I thought it, that was brave you just described. If you're brave, you... The, the enemy is... You can see the enemy coming towards you, and you mm. then have to leave regardless, because otherwise... Well, we're thinking mm. World War One here. <laughs> you kind of so what's the difference? No, the no, no, background no. you're painting. One is, painting one is you have one. a choice to mm. leave the shelter, to leave your comfort zone, to do something new. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is you don't have a choice, but you still do the correct, courageous mm. thing. Disagree. But to disagree. You just don't have the choice Vote when no. you start off with no. it. Oh, no. Bravery is not always when you're in, in a corner. No, no. Oh, when you standing on on the on the edge and over there is ocean right yeah and you're thinking do i jump or do i not jump right mm. so when uh when you brave you still fear as hell yeah yeah, yeah. in but you will jump cases, over you're this cracking fear. bricks i think over the <laughs> thing, i think really the simple answer is with Bravery, you fly in the face of danger. Yeah. With taking courage, you rise to meet danger. Yeah. Either way, the, the danger is the same, the fear is the same. But with bravery, I think the difference is is, is that you're kind of like you are running out to meet it. Like, mm -hmm. It's almost like you want it. Mm -hmm. While with courage, sort of, there's an essence of reluctance. Yeah. You're being forced into it. But what? you're being courageous. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so that. <laughs> exactly. That nailed it. <laughs> so so when a courageous person uh, making that choice, it's not even a choice for him. He knows that he has to do it, so he just walks. He has no option. Mm. And and jumps mm. there. It's a it's in a way it's a personal choice, mm. but for a person it's not really a choice because he knows that it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Mm. When a brave person jumps he knows it's probably such a wrong thing to do <laughs> i will probably die right now yeah. but uh, you know i'll fuck it. it so it comes down to really how you make your journey <laughs> between the right. point you start and right. the point you, you end it America. if you if you do it like standing upright meeting whatever the hell it is comes down the chute that <laughs> all right so in terms of avoidance yeah we can't we can't approach uh, avoidance with uh, bravery, no. Uh, yeah. In the bravery, we will just, uh, oh, I'll jump here, I'll risk here, I'll risk, no, no, no. In uh, fighting avoidance, we have to be courageous. Mm. Mm. We have to know, holy shit, I fear this thing, mm. but it has to be done. Yeah, you acknowledge it. Right, make it part of and that what, uh, What's the difference in terms of how we avoid and how normal people, I mean, normal fucks, avoid, <laughs> avoid. <laughs> avoid. Yeah. In, in our case, we should treat every sin single fear we have or I avoid this for not because of my speech. No, yeah. mm. you are tricking yourself. You do avoid this thing because of your speech. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> yeah. Okay, I have a, I have a game. Okay. We'll just one by one, really fast. We'll tell like one place or one uh, situation where we avoid without mm. thinking. Oh yeah. We'll just go for it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, I'll start. Um, 
I avoid talking on the phone. I avoid challenging the supervisor at work. I avoid saying my name, <laughs> which is really bad. <laughs> I avoid um, talking to uh, people I don't know. I avoid speaking up during seminars or lectures. Oh. So does it have to be different from all the above? Uh, I presume so. Uh, I avoid. I don't really avoid it. Don't fucking lie to us. No, 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 because no, 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 I, I was like, there was instances I, I will, I should avoid, like, is if I talk crap, but, but I don't avoid it, because I, if I want to say something, I generally will stand up and say it, even if I stammer like a beast, I still say it. Beast. Yeah. Um, so. But you would avoid it. Well. If, if you could. It, if I if I didn't think it was so funny, I'd avoid it because <laughs> I'm like, I have to share this. Um, okay. So, uh, um, other than saying I avoid avoid sharing bad jokes for fear of stammering. If it's a, a good joke, I will share it, hmm. even if I say it terribly. Right. I, I avoid telling long stories. Mm, long stories. Um, I used to avoid doing that, but now I don't anymore. I think it's. I think long stories are fundamental to conversation, mm -hmm. and it's like you can't avoid them. No way. <laughs> you can't avoid them. So I think that's her. That Does that is, mean you're very brave when you go and tell them? Well, I think actually no. Actually, I think because if it's being brave, mm. you are. You run out to meet the danger, yeah. while in if you're being courageous, you're standing yeah. up to danger. Yeah. So I'm thinking that I'm being courageous because I realise I have to do it. That's my mm -hmm. idea of conversation, telling a long story. I avoid correcting people on the tube who talk such like to talk bullshit about a scientific fact. And I know it's wrong, and I have a massive urge to go and tell them that what they're saying is bullshit. Have you guys heard of Speaker's Corner? Yep. Yeah, well, give, give a speech there. I've been to Speaker's Corner once. I promised myself I would go more. Mm. I've avoided the situation. Um, I should go more. But uh, we should all go sometime. Mm. And people who are watching this should come and see, or at least Come and participate. <laughs> at, at the very yeah. least, participate. Mm. One other thing I avoid is negotiations. Yeah. So I will ex. The the f stupid thing is, I end up accepting something which is Crap. not. Yeah. yeah, not as good as it could be because yeah. I don't like to negotiate. I would. For some reason, I'd rather pay a really bad price for something than, than suffer the talk pain. about it. Yeah, yeah, because the trauma yeah. of, <laughs> of stammering through negotiation stammering. is worse than the 20 quid or whatever extra I have to pay. Sad but true. Yeah. It is a financial burden. <laughs> yeah. Stammering is financially costly. Yeah. That is unfortunately really true. I don't like it. I do avoid making returns and stuff, mm. if it somehow relates. And I, I do avoid situations where I feel I'm being judged. Mm. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's very loud. Anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anything. And I avoid um, doctors because I start over them. Do you? Yeah. yeah. I want to. I want to tell them. About myself. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing is you have to give your patient history, because oh. like yeah. at least in the dentist, it's like they just open your mouth and have a look, and then it's fairly obvious. If you go to a doctor, you actually have to explain one what the problem is, two Who what your history you? is, three what how you came from? to realise you had the problem, yeah. <laughs> and four why it is a burden. <laughs> yeah. And after all that, then the doctor speaks, and you're like, oh, I see it more as an interview. That's a monologue.
Which it is, because they're there for you. Yeah, but... As opposed to you having to run up and be like... But is I think the thing I hate there is the... You get a fear you're using up their time, their okay. valuable time, which they could be seeing someone else to... Really? Like, I... If it is, like if I'm not literally on the floor dying, in which case obviously I'll be in any. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything else, I'm like, well, I the there's same thing. I go doctor, really. better people to go see who will be more concise in their explanations. It yeah. doesn't really bug me. I was just curious because I'm always curious, <laughs> and I'm like, easier to go see them. Which is harder, being the interviewer or the interviewee? The interviewee. Okay. Um, from. My experience because volunteering in the zoo. If you're the interviewer, you have the option to control stuff. And through that control, you have more... That's like, true. It, it true. gives you a sense of control over your speech. If you're the interviewee, you don't know what the next question is, where it's going, who's being judged, or anything. Yeah. Interviewee, hands down. Yeah. Is my way. I'm like, I, yeah. I, I t -t totally agree. And um, we mentioned thing like talking from a stage. Yeah. Mm. Many actors stutter, and um, many Russian actors I like. I found out recently that they stutter, and I start digging. Mm. And why one guy? Um, he his story that he was a severe stutter and he always wanted to you know, or he couldn't do anything else so he he went to acting and and he started here but don't start here so one day it was like a big uh, play and he was in it and he told to his director like look dude i have the worst day of my life i can't talk I, straight from the morning like i was the worst so what the director did he said no you you work in today go and he went and uh, and he had a perfect uh, speech <laughs> blah 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 obviously, <laughs> happy, obviously. Massive pressure. happy ending right yeah. so i think that uh, he experienced that moment that you uh, described that when you put on a spot he, you thought that you can avoid it but mm. it turned against you and <laughs> it's too late yeah. yeah so it was a turning point for him and his uh, stuttering mm. and career mm. and he became Who's the actor? some some russian dude who played uh, robin hood uh, in what film robin, robin hood <laughs> 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 uh, from, from Loxley. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Robin and um, in Cinderella. And um, yeah. myself. Um, Starring role. Yeah. Uh, myself Reed. on <laughs> on my my road of uh, facing avoidance and fears. I I've been in, in action. Mm. Uh, we we did a play where I'm oh, sorry where where all people stutter. It was like our lawn. Mm. It was for, for help. I very quickly need to make a phone call. Oh, yeah. um, I do apologize. Oh, yeah. yeah, do it and uh, and we'll watch you. <laughs> yeah, talk. Okay. Okay. yeah, I think yeah. it could be cool. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, hold on. Got message? No, no. Ah, don't avoid now. <laughs> no. There isn't a post to phone. Mm, no. Yeah. <gasps> Stop it. Okay, this part we did it. Yeah. Uh, here we did it. Okay, well, we can move to the news. Sam, hi. To the news. Okay, if I'm there in like, t t in like 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. Bye bye. What? Where? Yes, pot will be there and soon. Soon, soon. Okay, 10 minutes. Yes, you yes, I'm gonna bring your tub. Okay. Let's go. Uh, can you like read one one I'll ring short, a page. short short thing? Yeah. Also that just, was an just awful this. Phone call. Yeah. Anyway. Just <laughs> yeah. you're not avoiding that. <laughs> I'll phone him back but like it. I'm sorry <laughs> for speaking. But the thing is with him is that he puts on the phone like as soon as he even like stand my bit. Hmm? He does? 
He puts down the phone if you don't. <laughs> they, they say, right, dude, not me. <laughs> Stop. Uh, read this part, okay. this shit. Okay. Skip, and then finish with this. Okay. So, this and this. So, uh, wait, news. Da, 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 da. Everything is bigger in Texas. And the NSA annual conference is no exception. Oh, uh, we can hear you. Please. Join us July. 5th and 9th, 2017, for our 34th annual conference. 2017 is the 40th anniversary of the NSA. This so you know we'll be making this an event, remember? Uh, can I point out, um, importantly here, the, the NSA we are talking about is not the American one who did all the Windows exploits. It's the National Stam Stuttering Association, which might be American as well. Probably is. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. it's... it's a different American one. Uh, there's a program scheduled that kids, tweens, teens, families, young adults, adults and SLPs are sure to enjoy tours and events that are fun for the whole family, special guests and keynote speakers, and even a few surprises up our sleeves. This is one conference you will not want to miss. Dallas is a modern metropolis in North Texas. No, no, no. SLP is a speech language pathologist. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. During these four days, we will come together as a closely knit community of adults, children, families and friends who share stuttering as a common bond. We will be educated, motivated and challenged. We will be moved as we listen to the stories of our comrades. Sounds very communist for an American <laughs> yeah. event. And, and as we share our own stories, perhaps for the first time. Most of all though, we will we will realize once again that we belong to a very special community of caring individuals who understand exactly what it is and how it feels to stutter and we will remember how important it is to be part of that community voila basically it's the biggest stuttering event of the year it, uh, yeah and if not in the every world. year so, one th thousand people come into one place uh, and and yeah. they do workshops and stuff here Thomas is leaving. Okay, uh, 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 to give you some time of it, because we somehow missed that one out, is in Dallas on July 5th to 9th yes. of 2017. And uh, the source is uh, Bytom, bye for now, is a national stuttering association, you can find it. Okay, yeah, so news. we have another one. Local yeah. news. Local news, because we're Londoners, so yeah. we have yeah. on the... Um, See, this time he hasn't fallen off a chair, which is yeah. very impressive. <laughs> so, um, we have in London, we have the, Nash, the London Stammering Association Support Group on the 7th of June, which is in a week and a bit. Uh, I'm not sure what day, oh, it's on Wednesday even. On Wednesday, 7th of June. Next week. Uh, yep, so 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, I'm not sure how many spaces they have. Unlimited uh, but spaces. It's in 26 Bedford Way, London, which I think is the University of London. Um, and uh, it's aimed at people who stammers or people who know someone who stammers to get a, a good idea about um, what it's like to stammer, to play games, generally chat, because part of being a stammer, stammerer, is you don't realize how many other people there are so it's you end up thinking you're the only one and you can't understand why other people speak fluently because you're like how can you do it and i can't right um, so it's a good opportunity to meet your fellow fellow folks um play some games and make some friends and learn a bit more what makes other people tick because normally what other people know can help you in some way or other and helps you understand yourself exactly and um well if you start you're not alone there are support groups this one i'm going mm. oh yeah are you, are you going with me uh let's, let's do it dude there's an event I have to go to around that time. That's it's the okay, most frustrating okay. thing. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll go. I'll uh, tell you all about. It. Okay. Yeah, cool and and also if you like relative or involved with a stammering person, mm. this is also a 
place to start digging and uh, to know to learn more about Stata. If it is the place I'm thinking of, because that's in in UCL. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry, it yeah. Should be. University of London in R Russell Square, I think, is the nearest station. If I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, I did. Nice. A, a random fact for you. This might not be that useful. Um, when I was in Michael Palin stammering school thingy, I don't know what it's called. Um, they recruited stammerers to do some research, so I took part in their research. This was from age 16 maybe, and then I went on the Maguire course and I went back to do some some more of the same tests, nice. having explained to them that mm -hmm. um, I've been on this course and then repeated the test. Having done a follow-up test unfortunately because to see how my speech changed and if the same things which they think cause the stammer continue to cause the stammer which probably it will in my experience still stammering <laughs> <laughs> hasn't changed anything i'm just more comfortable with it but um they do there's a group there who are doing a research project on stammering and it's quite cool um Steve Davis, Dr. Steve Davis. I'm not sure what he's doing, but he's a good guy and researching stammering. So if I'll uh, mention your name, I, I will have a, 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 a special VIP insight in, no, 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 in, no. into the group. <laughs> if he's there, he's a good guy to meet. And sign up to his research if he's still he's doing it because it's pretty cool if i'm there i'll i'll say hi yeah and um i was googling the uh, internet about uh, stuttering yeah and i and i found uh, i'll do have you'll do have i found um anyway uh 11 facts about stuttering welcome to do something.org a global movement of five and a half million young people making positive change online and off. Uh, young people, uh, they meant in heart, of course, don't take them serious. <laughs> the 11 facts you want uh, are below. Uh, and the sources for the facts are at the very bottom of the page. After you learn something, do something found out how to take action here and here comes the well they are asking for money for this uh, uh, knowledge don't give them any but I ag agree <laughs> with most of it <laughs> uh, stuttering aka stammering is a speech dis disorder that causes the flow of speech to be broken up uh, about five uh, children who one in 20 five percent of children wife in 20 ages two to five will develop s some stuttering during the childhood that's very true and it will go away in 98 uh, percent out of it while some will recover by age of seven or eight out of every 100 children well they're they're uh, trying to convert percent into <laughs> amount of children out of hundred very, very smart but um, what they say here that uh, like really happening you can develop stuttering at, at any age stuttering is more common in boys than girls thank god for that <laughs> why <laughs> uh, be, uh, because it's Easy on boys to start. I mean, anyway, uh, I'm not a sexist. Well, <laughs> what just I just do? I just, I, I just killed myself. Let's just fucking move on. More than yeah, 70 million people worldwide are starters. Well, it's actually two percent of of everyone what can talk mm. starters. Um. So. Okay. Uh. There's more facts. Stuttering is a biological 
a neurological condition that is caused by one or more of four possible triggers. First being genetics. There's only one fact here. <laughs> <laughs> which I... <laughs> uh, and then stuttering tends to run in families and genes which mm. can cause stuttering have been identified. Okay, then the next point is trigger two. Child development is another possible cause. So basically growing up. So as children with other speech language problems or development delays are more likely to stutter. So if you have anything which would delay your learning to speak for whatever reason, like lack of people to talk to or, or whatever could have an impact. Um, third is neurophysiology. Ongoing research shows that people who stutter seem to process language, speech and language differently than people who don't. And here means that if your brain has a particular shape, i.e. how the neurons are connected, um, it can contribute to stuttering. So strokes and traumatic brain injuries would have an impact. And then fourth of those reasons is family dynamics. So if you live in a family with high expectations, and everything just happens super fast or emotional trauma like you, you get punished or whatever it's likely to have an impact it probably won't just have an impact on stammering but it could have it would affect your stammering i have paraphrased a bit um i to, agree with this one 100 yeah i think it would happen to me I think... F I'll explain later. Yeah, okay, good. Um, then you have many famous actors, athletes and musicians who have dealt with stuttering. Marilyn Monroe, James Earl Jones, Emily Blunt, B.B. King and Shaquille O'Neal are to name a few. Last one of the 11 facts is there's a variety of smartphone and tablet applications designed to help with stuttering such as Balbus speech, fluently smart ears and the stammer eye. Um, I once had this treat on the last one I once had this treatment for the um, in I think Michael Palin or somewhere probably um, basically a lot of these apps slow down your speech so you speak into it and, and then, then it will they play it back to you. It for mm. you yeah it does work but it's a bit awkward having your earphones always in when you're trying to talk to people but it is weird in that it, it does work <laughs> because I've that's the thing it. which i don't get i've tried it yeah. there is a device called uh, speak easy mm. speech easy same thing but this device costs like five thousand yeah Right, so what it does is just uh, delays. I, I think what it uh, triggers is just slows you down your mm. speech. Is, I think it... I mean, you have to wait for for this. You're still processing mm. this uh, echo. Yeah. And when you do that, that distracts you from, yeah. from everything else. Mm. I, I mean, I, I can't use... I know people who successfully using it for, mm. for some situations but I know if you use it for a continuous period of time it stopped working then your battery dies what you can't talk <laughs> like no yeah. I, I can't use those devices and um, in, in terms of putting on the spot my parents saw that I'm genius yeah. because they saw that I have a good memory so they made me m memorize like uh, poems and stuff yeah. And then guests would come and they would put me on a fucking chair on the spot <laughs> and they would like, look how, <laughs> how genius our, our son is. I had no idea what, what was going on, right? Yeah. And, and I hated this mm. all my life. So I thought that that was the, the beginning of uh, uh, triggering something in me which I already had. This natural mm. avoidance, this natural stuttering gene and, uh, and all those things. Mm. Just, <laughs> I think I had a 
I had the opposite view, which probably equally screwed me up. Which is, <laughs> which is, it wasn't until I was like age 12 I actually thought it would be a good idea to speak to people. So I think basically I was more or less a mute. I would speak and stammer, but I'd just avoid talking generally. It obviously didn't help my speech. Um, because I think partly because in that case I figured I was like I was very much into engineering and stuff from a really young age like four or five so I was building these enormous Lego kits and it never occurred to me you have to speak to people it just, just simply didn't go through my mind at all so I was like I don't care about speech I know I I knew I had trouble speaking but I thought, may I be fine, I don't need to worry about it. And then obviously when I had to speak to people like for class presentations, answering register, all of that stuff, um, my speech f fell apart. And it's in those instances, it sort of, basically I had my cake and I ate it, which was the, the, the cake was I could avoid speaking the rest of the time, but then when it came to actually having to speak, speech would be way worse because I had no idea that it was something I'd um, have to work on in any way. Yeah. And my parents ended up helping me avoid speaking. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I got helped in this. Well, I think... Is it... Well, I... I... I appreciate everyone did it for me. I didn't yeah, yeah. To speak. Maybe it helps. Uh, I think it screwed me up. <laughs> well, um, I th yeah, it's it screwed us up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I when, think it's well intended, but just well, when we're feeding our avoidance. Yeah. When we let it, like, oh fuck yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I avoided speech therapy. Mm. Out of everything, I <laughs> like. Uh, what? I'd rather not go on this. On a, on this. Well, it was like mm. until I got like help. Uh, right. I think that's it for. Yeah, today. I think that was a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Avoidance is quite a big topic. So is avoidance is a bitch. Don't do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably will. So I'm Eugene Masoski Gallagher. Alex is here um, finding Tom Wheeler as uh, a co-host. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, we'll have more coming up. Yep. Uh, bye for now. See you. Yep. Bye for now. <laughs> Still here.